Well, I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out. But we're going to try. Uh, with the dog running around, Max, my wife, made some cereal in the kitchen. Alex playing Minecraft, making noise on the computer. Dog barking. What the fuck? Anyway, this is my arsenal. It's a M7A1. I beat him this piece of machinery. And what I intend to do is take it back to what it should be, which is an, a beautiful machine with steel and wood, not plastic and metal. So what I did was I ordered a wood set, wood stock set from Ironwood Designs and my main task right now is to see if they fit. You know I ordered this set to fit a Bulgarian style you know it has the two um receiver for the butt stock and here's the lower and the upper hand guard. So one word of advice, if you order from Ironwood Designs, uh, they're in Sacramento, I think it's Sacramento, but anyway, um, don't get in a big hurry. Uh, if you order from them, be ready to wait at least one month to receive your wood stock set. Uh, these are nice, um, I will give them that, but I'm not sure it's worth waiting a month over. I'll find out, I suppose, uh, when I see how they fit. So, my first task is to see how they fit against the receiver um, before I put a finish on them. I want to make sure they fit. And um, uh, so, what I'll do is I'll test the fit before I um, put the finish. Now, speaking of finish, uh, what I have is a shellac and it is a Thai seed lac uh, shellac uh, from Thailand obviously it is a uh, if you're not familiar with shellacs uh, it's a natural product this one is a natural product I'm sure there are some synthetic shellacs I'm not into plastic or honestly um, I'm not an expert on firearms so um, what I do enjoy about a firearm is its appeal as a piece of art, okay? And when you look at a milled receiver that has been milled from a block of steel uh, into a fine piece of machinery, such as this Arsenal SA-M7A1, uh, you can appreciate that. And my impression of this piece of art does not include plastic. Okay, no plastic, only natural materials such as wood and steel. So the synthetic plastic is going away. Now some of you will say, why would you take an expensive rifle like the Arsenal SA-M7A1 and put uh, wood on it? Well, I ask you the same question except I will substitute wood for plastic. Why would you take a beautiful piece of machinery like this and put plastic on it? In any event, I'm going to do it and I'm going to be happy. Back to the finish. I get sidetracked easily. Again, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, shellacs, but as I said earlier, my interest in firearms is um, mainly in the activity of shooting, and, and the art form of the, the work that it took to make the firearm. I am more concerned about the medium, the materials, and the longevity and the artwork itself. So today, again, uh, my goal here was to use the, most, the highest quality finish that I could, which in this case, I have chosen uh, shellac to put a finish on the stock. The subject of shellacs is long and drawn out, and I will not bore you with a lot of details, but basically this shellac 
is produced uh, in Thailand by an insect that uh, by the hundreds of thousands gather on a tree, a host tree, which mainly in Thailand would be like, I think the, uh, the English version of the tree is the river tree. They attach themselves to the tree and they secrete, once they start sucking out the sap of the tree, they secrete this resin. And as the resin hardens, uh, it becomes co a coating on the, the sticks, the branches of the tree. And what the locals will do is they will, after the life cycle of the insect, which I think is called the Lassifer laca, they will harvest the limbs, uh, being careful not to damage the tree. Obviously, they want, they want it to produce uh, seed black the next year. Uh, they will harvest the limbs and they will remove the hard resin from the limbs and uh, process it. And it becomes, I'm trying to think of what would be a good, it's kind of a crusty, you know, bead. Uh, they refine it down to where it's about, I don't know, 16th to an eighth of an inch in diameter, little uh, pellets type uh, substance. Now, this is not totally pure. There, there will be uh, bits and pieces of, of, of limbs and sticks and uh, actually parts of the insect in here. And I'll show you this where you'll, well, I'll have to dissolve this in a, a denatured alcohol. So basically what you do is I'll place this seed black, a shellac, in a container, a small amount, and dissolve it with the denatured alcohol. Then I'll strain it. And this particular color is sort of an amber red color, uh, which I did a little research on, and I think will be the closest uh, to the original uh, AK. And I, my goal is to produce a stock that Kalishnikov himself would be proud of. And I know that I will be proud of it. Uh, this is beech, uh, the wood, and in my talkings with uh, Matt at Ironwood Designs, he assured me that this was the best wood to get an even finish uh, with the shellac. You'll see that the grain is very tight. You'll notice on a lot of the wood stocks that you see on the internet, the grain is really open. You get these wide uh, patterns in the, in the shellac. Now I may get some of that. Uh, but for the most part, the grain here is pretty tight. And as you can see, their, um, their attention to detail on these wood products is pretty good. So this is a uh, replica of the Belgian handguard. And this is the upper piece. So, my first task is to basically take off the plastic, which I will be happy to do, and see if my wood parts fit. And if they fit fine, uh, then I will, I will proceed to uh, put a shellac finish on them and um, install them. So uh, that's what I'm going to do next is, next is just check the fit. And um, I don't know how much I'll show off me actually taking apart uh, the AK and I'll make just show a little bit. Um, I'm sure most of you know how to take off uh, these parts, but I may show a little bit just for the fun of it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is remove my dust cover, which most of you know is there's a little button here, latch, push that, and remove that cover. Now I'll remove that. Sprinkle on the screen and bolt. Let's see. Down. I'll say first. I'll get the plastic grip off. Uh, we'll get the screw. I'll slide through here. I'll take that out. You like that? But I'll do the best you can. That's the long straight rod. And there's the piece of plastic chunk that I'm taking off. Oh, it feels good. We're getting rid of plastic. Now, I know I've seen some people uh, comment in forums about this kind of thing, and you know, I don't know, this rifle retails anywhere from $1,500, uh, let's just say anywhere from $1,200 to $2,000, and they'll say, why are you 
doing that to a perfectly good rifle. Well, it's my opinion that they screwed up a perfectly good rifle by putting plastic parts on it. So I'm going to review you that. Most of the comments actually that I've seen are based on uh, someone putting other parts on the, uh, you know, like a, uh, like a TACCO uh, set, stock set versus the factory. So I haven't seen too many that speak negative to, negatively of uh, putting replacing it with wood. So maybe I won't meet with too much resistance. After all, the AK is there to meet the resistance, right? Okay. So with a clean hand, I'm just going to try to compare these two right quick. I think this looks like it's a little shorter, yeah, than the, the NATO length stock that has been placed on it. Which I, I won't mind, I like that. So uh, you'll notice here the, the strap has been let into the butt stock and I was careful to order that on my wood stock set. So that strap should fit right in there. And that's part of the, the big overall question. Will it work? So I can see now there's going to be a little fitting uh, there, which is fine. You see, one thing I don't want to do is go through all the trouble of shellacking this stock and then having to sand it afterwards. What I'll do is I'll, I'll fit this, I'll take this to the shop and I'll fit this into the receiver uh, so that it fits snug, you don't want it to be loose. Um, and then when I'm assured that it's fitting properly, uh, then, I'll, um, then I'll put the finish on it. As far as the uh, grip, Let's see here. That will go in there like that. And this piece here that I ordered to go with this set will go on this, this way. Slide on like that. And then we'll help reinforce the grip there on the receiver. Okay. Now, as we know, as we all know, that, uh, in case you don't know, uh, we will raise this little lever here, and that will allow us to take our gas tube off. Then what we have to do is find this little lever. Uh. I don't really like using metal on metal, but I'm just going to give it a little nudge to see if it'll work. Just a little persuasion. Yeah. That's what I thought. That little lever there. Okay. And that's how we'll. Oh! I almost forgot. I got to remove the clean rod, which means I got to take off the flash hider. Suppressor, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Take the cleaning rod out. Now, we should just be able to push this band here forward to get the lower hand guard off. It actually takes some finagling. Ow, booger eater. <laughs> okay, well, I got it loose anyway. This is hard to keep. Try to keep it in the frame and also work with it at the same time. Here we go. So here we have the lower hand guard piece and the upper removed 
and so what we'll, we will see now if it fits is the new lower hand guard piece. It should fit in here like that and then the band should go back around it. Oh baby, I mean that was like a glove. That fits like a glove. Okay, the trick with this gas tube is just going to be to rotate it um, 180 degrees from where it was, but let me see if I can just get it back on. What I had to do was to take a rag and take a piece of, take some pliers so I wouldn't scar the metal. It just plastic is actually harder to do. Okay. That's the plastic back in its original position. Okay, so what you have to do is to get a hold of it, take some pliers with a piece with a rag, and grab onto it so you don't scratch the metal, and just rotate that guard 180 degrees so that it comes out through the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's there's places in the bottom that are open. So that when you place it on there, it will rotate freely, you know, and when you rotate it 180 degrees, it'll be back on top. Now, the wood part should just go on the same way. So I'm going to slide the wood in there and just rotate it. Oh, it's rotating a little easy. So apparently the wood portion, the wood part is fitting easier than the plastic part did. So then to place this back, we just uh, slide that part of the gas tube over that. Again, I'm trying to keep this in frame and do it too. It's a little bit harder to do. Oh, I gotta make, make sure your lever is up. My lever was down, that's what it was. And then pop that into place and then put your lever back down. So that is going to fit. now. A little bit loose but maybe I think you see that's part of the fitting process this one is snug so I probably I probably don't want to get too much stain or shellac around this band you know on the wood because it'll add to the thickness but what I might do is pull my lever back up and pull this back off what I might want to do is actually uh, I'll take this back around looks like I take it off What I'm actually want to do is, make, is get the shellac and stain, you know, shellac around this rim, and that will actually snug that fit up. And see, that's part of what you see here too. This is why I'm not supposed to. I've got my hands dirty. Now I'll have to clean that wood. That's grease on there, but I can clean that off with some alcohol. But anyway, um, this is part of the process: is fitting, pre-fitting the wood pieces to see if there's anything in the shop I need to do, uh, you know, sanding or fitting. Um, there's a place right here. I think I'll take I'll take this to the shop and straighten this out right here on both sides. Looks like they went a little wacky with their router or whatever that whatever they use uh, there. Um, so I'll take this to the shop. But that's that's gonna look good guys. Can't wait to get the uh, um, to get these wood pieces uh, finished and, and on and um, one thing they, they, they did a good job at was uh, and I've already put the spring in there uh, for the, the cleaning kit but um, this cap, this butt cap fits pretty good and there's a little spring that holds the cap on and, and they even routed out the, um, the butt stock for this little plate and they have little slots on each side for it and then that'll just uh, fit over that like that I'm going to finish this first uh, and I'm going to check the sling mount it fits really good I'm excited and uh, got a bunch of parts here now I need to take care of uh, the bolt and everything try to keep them all together while I uh, put this thing back together Let's put this back on right quick just to give a quick quick look. 
Well, I've got some cleaning to do. I'm going to rotate that around like that on the gas tube. And I'm going to fit this back over right here on the outside of that little fixture. I'll make sure my lever is in the right position. Pop that into place. Pop my lever down. Uh, uh, and that stock will go like that. But it's going to be cool. Maybe I'll take some video of, of the shop. But uh, the main thing now is to get these parts fitted properly and uh, get them shellac. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that.